Welcome to the third installment of the 10 ox herding pictures or the 10 bulls. If you didn't watch the previous video, I'll put the link in the corner. In this series of ancient woodblocks, the bull or the ox represents our true nature. It represents the eternal principle, the Dharma. You could also say it represents the self with a big S. If you're familiar with Buddhist doctrine and feel inclined to say there is no self, I just want to tell you it's okay, we'll get to that. The third ox herding picture is called Perceiving the Bull. I hear the song of the nightingale. The sun is warm, the wind is mild, willows are green along the shore. Here no bull can hide. What artist can draw that massive head, those majestic horns? When one hears the voice, one can sense its source. As soon as the six senses merge, the gate is entered. Wherever one enters, one sees the head of the bull. This unity is like salt in water, like color in dye stuff. The slightest thing is not apart from the self. Can you sense the clarity in those first few lines? The warmth of the sun, the calmness of the wind, the sound of the nightingale. This is beautifully illustrative of the profound absorption into the sense experience of being alive that one glimpses as they come into direct contact with their true nature. We're no longer looking for the footprints. We've looked up and come face to face with that head. What artist could draw that massive head and those majestic horns? The artist analogy is perfect because once we taste that reality, we're no longer looking at a map. We've pulled the map aside and looked into reality in an unfiltered way. And it's unmistakable. This is a true taste of realization. Often I call it the pre-awakening experience or a pre-taste of awakening. Experientially, it is awakening, but it's short-lived. And the key difference between this and true awakening is that it's still an experience. The identity hasn't quite shifted yet, but this seed has planted itself. It's just a matter of time now, unless we really fight it. Awakening is on the horizon for us. Now, while you're experiencing this, it doesn't really feel like you could be more awake than this. It feels exceedingly real, exceedingly absorbed. The aliveness and fluidity and the experience of infinity is unmistakable. This experience is altogether beyond the ways you've learned to perceive yourself and the world and the body and the mind. When people tell me the stories of this happening, it's so interesting because often they're not quite sure if it was awakening because it was so incredibly real and so vast and clear. And yet it's usually short lived. It often lasts several hours to a day or two, but not typically beyond that. And it's typically followed by a feeling of utter frustration and despair because it's gone. It's very much a, I had it and I lost it. I was walking through the Garden of Eden and suddenly it's nowhere to be found. This is the signature of these pre-tastes of awakening where the experiential aspects of absorption, of luminosity, deep peace, infinity, freedom are given to us or somehow we find ourselves here and yet the identity of the one experiencing it is still intact. It's very subtle and it's probably impossible to notice it at that moment other than afterward it feels so heavy. You feel so heavy but you need this glimpse and you need that contrast to realize what it is that's preventing us from recognizing unequivocally that that Garden of Eden, that place of infinite spontaneity and flexibility and 
dissolution and absorption is always here. It's not an experience. And the contrast between this absorption, this perception of the ox and what comes right after it, which is a sort of despair of the self is a necessary contrast. This really paves the way for the true shift that's coming. The line, when one hears the voice, one can sense its source, is so beautiful. Once you've tasted this, you're not far at all from the source. You're not far at all from the living truth that the functioning of ego seems to filter, seems to keep at bay, seems to keep at a distance. That's followed by, as soon as the six senses merge, the gate is entered. This really is the key experientially and from a practice standpoint to the next step, which is a step off into true infinity. This is a step off into a vast, fluid, unconditioned identity. That's awakening. And this clue that where the six senses merge is very important. As we orient ourselves to deep self-inquiry, to letting go of all thoughts while simultaneously merging with the thought stuff, consciousness, making no distance, but continuing to de-identify and just going beyond thoughts. It becomes so focused that often the sense gates are closed. We're interested in the nature of consciousness itself or the thought stuff or the thought space or the space of I. And at least for this movement, we're not interested in the sense experiences. So we want to just absorb into that who am I and feel right into that center of being until there's no thoughts about it anymore. I don't need to think about what I am, just experience I am and drop the thought I am and just rest there. No thought can touch this. So if any thought stirs, we can immediately discount that as, oh, another thought. I don't know what to do here. Oh, that's another thought. It's getting quite peaceful. Oh, that's another thought. But I hear sounds. I'm not supposed to hear sounds. Oh, that's another thought. Just be on alert but relaxed. Don't strain yourself, but remain alert for the movement of thought to the movement of mind. And notice in that alertness, in that I sense, that being sense, you don't need a thought to point back to what you are because you're already that. Just rest in it. You're almost excited to see the next thought because it will be released as another bit of proof that I don't need a thought to define this, this beingness, pure knowingness. So we're letting go of thoughts again and again and again. It's not, I am a man, I am a woman, I am older, younger, I'm good at this, I'm bad at this. None of that. It's just the I am. It's just the I. Just the wordless existence. Remain there. Don't contemplate anything. Don't push or pull on anything. You can remain in some curiosity about who or what I am, but don't think about it. Just be it. Notice you can never not be it. This is the key. Just stay there. When the fear response comes, just stay there. Notice the fear thoughts, let them go, don't move. When it gets very quiet, notice the thoughts about it getting quiet, let them go. If you feel like a void is coming, notice the thought that says a void is coming, let it go. Notice the thoughts that are coming saying, I'm letting go of everything, including my life as I know it, and let them go too. Stay right here. Don't move. Don't start thinking. This is the key.